everybody. Glad to see you here in the second floor at Science North. My name is Jackie and I'm going to be taking you along while I feed and interact with our tropical bugs here. But first, we would like to acknowledge that we are on the traditional and ancestral lands of the Atikameshing, Anishinaabe, and Wanapate First Nation. We would also like to acknowledge the Métis Nation for their cultural and economic contribution in this area. These lands sit in the Robinson-Huron Treaty area. And we as treaty people, it is important for us to all be thinking about what treaty area we live in and are an active part of. Let's take a moment to appreciate the land that we are on by acknowledging the traditional territory and treaty areas you are located in. Okay, great. So we're gonna start feeding, but before I start that, I want to let you know that Renata is my second hand off the scenes that's gonna be helping me with any questions that you have and Hi. ask me questions. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Okay, so I have my tray here and I've already cut up all the food that we're going to be using. Right now we're going to start with our walking sticks. Now, all of our bugs are tropical. These are tropical. They come from Malaysia, Madagascar, Philippines, and we have three different species in here. So I'm going to take out one of my favorites, the first, and it's called a pink wing Madagascar walking stick and I have an SKT with that. Okay, so pink wing. Yes, she's kind of pink, but her wings, if she shows us that, have a nice little hue to them. Okay, so walking sticks are known for their camouflage. Walking sticks, they can hide when they're not moving around, they look like sticks, but if they have to get away, they have the wings. So that's one of our walking sticks. Our other walking sticks don't have wings. So how do you think this one could protect himself? Again, looking like a stick, but one of the things that he does, if he gets really scared, He's just going to backflip off my hand like a somersault and fall to the ground just to get away. He's very similar to our native one that we have here in Ontario. Hey, Jackie, are the native walking sticks as big as this ones that you're showing us? Are native ones about this size, a little thicker in the body and light, light beige. Now the next one I'm gonna take out are just babies yet. They haven't grown up and they're gonna be really our biggest walking stick in here. So this is a baby, New Guinea. Different from the other ones because it doesn't have that little stick body. It's more like an old flattened leaf. So they can camouflage really well we never see these guys hiding like the other ones do. They, they stay pressed against the log to hide themselves. Oh, she's giving you a side view. Now I say she because if you look at the tail, can you see the end of the tail? It's got a little point. So the females have that point on their tail because that's for egg laying, where the males wouldn't have that point at all. So what am I gonna feed these guys? Oh, we any escapees? No, these guys. Hey, Jackie. Okay. So are these ones called walking sticks or walking leaves? They are many, many names. They can be walking sticks, walking bugs, leaf bugs, stick bugs. It's, it's all a variety of that. They're all the same because there are some that look just like a leaf, flat, round, and have holes in them. The camouflage that these guys are available is just amazing. Okay, so because they're plant eaters, we're gonna give them lettuce. Lettuce, nice big crispy leaves. In the winter, they get leaves of lettuce. 
in the summer, they get raspberry leaves that we can cut outside or roses or sometimes oak leaf. These just go in here and they sit in the water so they stay nice and fresh. Nobody likes a soggy salad. And then they're all fed. Hey Jackie, how fast will they eat all of those leaves? You won't see anything happening right now, but come tomorrow morning, they'll be gone. All those leaves will be gone because they tend to eat at night to avoid predators. When everybody else is sleeping, that's when I, they start moving around. So are they, are they what people call nocturnal? Yes, they are nocturnal, which means they are more active at night. Pretty cool. And how much do they weigh? Oh, goodness. They're really really light. I'd say featherweight. I've never actually really weighed one. Okay, they're all fed and ready to go. Our next ones we're going to go to, now again, any questions, let me know, are the Madagascar hissing cockroaches from Madagascar. Now, why they're called hissing, we're going to see if I can do that. So I'm going to move the log and there's going to be a lot underneath the log. They like to hide in the dark. If I touch any, and they're not saying a word. Oh, there we got one. Can you hear that hiss? That hiss means leave me alone. I don't want to be bugged. And how they make that hiss is their breathing holes on the side of their body, their spiracles, they force out the air really fast and go. And hopefully that scares whatever bugging them off. It didn't scare me. So cool, Jackie. Can you tell which ones are male or females? Okay, well, you can see the one I have has these bumps on her head on the head shield. Okay, so the bumps are the females. Oh. A male, like this guy here, doesn't have the bumps. Okay, we have people asking if there's any difference in uh, coloration. Are females lighter or darker? They can be lighter if their abdomen is bigger because they're holding an egg case. So it's, it's stretched out, but not always. Usually as they get older, they get a little lighter and the juveniles can be darker. Cool. And you mentioned those breathing holes. Can you explain? Um, uh, bugs? How, yeah. How do they breathe? Yeah. Bugs don't have lungs like we do. They have holes on the side of their abdomen that directly link into their system that the oxygen comes into. So it's not the same kind of breathing where our oxygen goes in our lungs and then it gets transferred into our blood system it's a direct link so these guys again are plant eaters but more of an omnivore they'll eat almost anything we're going to give them some oranges and one little piece of cucumber just to have something of variety in there and these again will be gone tomorrow for sure. They'll eat everything. And Jackie, can they bite you? Can they bite you? Can they bite? No, not really. They don't have teeth. They have just like a, a hard gum line. They have spikes on their legs though. So some people when they get picked up or they, they think it's a bite, but it's actually a scratch from their legs but it doesn't hurt. Okay, now, oh, I've left somebody out here so we could visit a little better. This is a giant African sail. Now, a lot of times, again, these guys are more active at night. So if we look into our terrarium, none of them are out because they're kind of sleeping. So I have brought this guy out a little ahead of time to tease him to come out so we could see what he looks like. 
So giant African snails can live for over 10 years and they can be even a little bigger, the size of my fist. And snails, they're land snails. There's land snails and water snails. These guys are land snails from Africa. So big, Jackie, how old are they? This guy's probably maybe eight or nine years old. Because since I've been here for over 20 years, we've had these snails. And maybe we've had one or two that's passed from old age. They live quite a long time. Now, if you look at him, he's kind of went in a little bit. But these top stalks here are where his eyes are. So when his eyes come out, see it's coming out, the little jelly at the end is the eye. If we don't see that little jelly, then it's just a stalk and he's actually not seeing us. And the little tentacles at the bottom are his nose. So we're going All to get right, going. So we have a question here, okay. Jackie. What's so how, how do they breathe and how well can they see? They see kind of like on a foggy day where you can see a shape, but you can't really distinguish color or sharpness. So if we had our glasses on and we scratched them up really good, it's not really good vision, but they can smell really good. And they breathe, they have a hole. If I pick them up, he's gonna go right in, but they have a hole right under the edge of the shell here. That's their air hole. And they just breathe through that air hole and then they have a lung. Really cool, Jackie. Can, can they lose their, their shells? No, they cannot lose their shells. If they lose their shells, they're not gonna be able to live anymore because if you look at the model here, all of their insides and heart and lungs and are in the shell and attached to it. It cannot come apart. So when they're born, we have lots and lots and lots of eggs. This is an egg from these guys. Looks like and a mushroom. It does kind of. This egg came out the side of his neck right there. So you can imagine that coming out of his neck. It's like, oh my goodness. He has a little spot right there that looks just like a little booster shot kind of. And that's where they lay their eggs. Because all snails can lay eggs. Because all snails are boys and girls. They have both body parts. So that's why they can lay, if you've seen in the terrarium, many, many, many eggs. 200 sometimes at a time, many times a year. And when this egg hatches, there'll be a snail in here, full shell and everything. So the size of this here was how big he was when he was a baby. So cool. And how long does it take for them to grow that big? This guy's about eight or nine years old. Well, that's pretty fast for a snail still. The largest snail in the world is a water snail. And he's about the size of my head. That's a big snail. So with the snails, Jackie, can we tell if they're male or female? They are all both. Snails are called hermaphrodites, meaning that they have both parts. So everybody can lay eggs. So some yummy apples for them. And some nice yummy lettuce. You're not going to see these guys run because they're slow. And they will come out at night and crawl all around and eat up all this yummy lettuce. So tomorrow we'll just pick up pieces and then give them some more. And how often do you have to feed them, Jackie? Pardon me? How often do you have to feed them? Every day. We feed them every day because they eat every day and they're growing still. They have to keep their metabolism up. 
So it's not a lot every day, but it's every day. Do they get more active in the spring, Jackie? In the spring, it can increase a little bit because in here, they're not going to notice really that it's getting colder or warmer because the temperature doesn't change, but the light gets a little longer. And we do notice a little bit of increased eating in the spring. Okay, we have lots of questions coming. Do they have teeth? They don't have teeth like we think of teeth. They have what's called a radula. So it's like a tongue. And if you've ever had a cat lick you, you can feel how rough it is times a hundred. It's a really, really rough tongue. So when they have their food, their tongue scrapes along the food and tears little pieces off of it until it's all gone. And does the, the shell grow too? We have some people asking. And also if they can drink. They can drink because we always have water in there, but a lot of times is they're getting their hydration from what they're eating. So lettuce has a lot of water in it. So they're getting a lot of their hydration from what they're eating. But we have seen them in the dish on occasion, not very often. And it's the same thing. It's like the cat licks up the water. They would lick up the water also. Your questions are really good. So snails worldwide are 60,000 species. In Canada, about 300 different species. We have a very funny one here for you, Jackie. Yes. So do they poop? They do poop, but they poop kind of like there's no bum, right? So where he breathes, right kind of back a little farther is another little hole for the poop. And it comes out, it's very slow. So it's very formed and it looks like a long skinny rope. And that's how they poop. They do poop because they do eat. Oh, Jackie, is it true that they can hibernate in their shells for yes. years, years at a time if they encounter a danger like poison or whatever? Yes, all snails can shut themselves off and hibernate like a diapause. And they do this by because they make their shell as they grow, they can also make this little button that close them, closes them off and, and totally seals their shells. So on occasion, sometimes if it's gotten too dry in here, we can come in and these guys will have this film started where they usually come out. And all we have to do is spray it really good and they'll break it and come out again. And why do they have this slime? The slime? Slime, sorry. The slime is how they protect themselves and how they get them to move. Just like we have all this mucus in our mouth and in our nose, their slime helps them right, slide along and, and uh, be mobile. And it's also weird, weird information. It's also very good for your skin. There is actually snail face cream out there that you could buy because not slime, it has antibacterial properties in it. So many cool things that we can learn about snails, Jackie. So I have a few more for you. So how thick are their shells? Their shells aren't that thick. It's about, hmm, I'd say like a, a corning well, dinner plate. You know the thin dinner plates that we can get sometimes that are white? It's about that thick. So if we did drop one, his shell would break. Let's not drop one. Have we ever dropped one? Yeah. Let's We've not. never dropped one. We no. have had on occasion something happen and it drops. Um, but luckily it didn't crack. So we have a few people wanting to know if they are omnivores, like can they eat meat? Some can, 
there are predatory snails that live in the oceans for sure. Land snails, there are just a few species that are predatory and they go after worms and, and other things like that, soft body creatures. So these guys, they'll eat lots of plant food though, a variety, strawberries, fruits, corn, And if their shells break, Jackie, can they be repaired or will they die? Depending on the break. If the break is really far near the back, it's harder because that's where their organs are and it can get infected really easily. If it's closer up to the edge, that's where they're actively growing like a fingernail. So they can fix that. You can also have like uh, turtle shells get broken and you bring them to the sanctuary and they sew them up, you are able to do that, but it takes a long, long time. And you have to keep it from getting infected. Okay, cool. I heard we have more animals to show today. We do. Our next bug is one of my favorites. Now, right now, if I open this up, you see nothing, right? What could be in a pile of leaves? Well, it's something that eats the leaves, but it won't stay on top because it has to be moist. So we're going to open it up, see what we can see. Oh, I'm starting to see something. Can you see that? These are millipedes. These are small millipedes. They can get much bigger than these. These are Malaysian millipedes. So you can see because I've opened it up, they're all trying to get back under the leaves and into the dark and because they can dry out and they can die from, that's a little baby there. So I say like babies and teenagers and but you can see they're all up eating the apples. These ones, we tend to leave all the food in here until they've totally eaten it all. They're decomposers and they are great for improving your soil because everything will be eaten down and put back into the soil. So I'm going to give these guys a bunch of cucumbers. And we're going to just put them on top of the soil here and there. And then I'm going to find our big guy and take him out. How many are there, Jackie? Yes. How many millipedes do you have there? Oh, I'd say we're probably over 100 now. With all the babies, we're probably well over 100. I'm going to move over to the other section now. And Jackie, do they ever eat those leaves? They do. They do. That's why the bottom, you can see as I get lower down, I'm getting into smaller pieces because they, they eat the leaves too and, and break it up. Oh, you can see my big guy, two of my big guys. Right here. Oh, there we go. So where's your head? There's your head. So millipedes are round bodies and two feet for every segment. Centipedes are different, although they're still long with lots of legs, but centipedes tend to be flat bodied and centipedes tend to be dangerous because they're venomous and eat other bugs where millipedes eat plant materials and break down mold and fungus and mushrooms. And you can see how his legs were moving like a little wave while he was walking on me. Does it tickle, Jackie? So I'm gonna feed these guys a little more. It feels having him crawl on me kind of like a little tickly, like a Velcro maybe. 
We tend to handle the big ones and not the little ones because the little ones are more sensitive to if we have anything on our hands. Now, what kind of a defense do these guys have? If, if he was a brand new millipede that wasn't used to getting picked up, they have little glands on the side of their body that release a mild acid. So to us, it really does nothing. It might stain my hand purple a little bit, but to smaller creatures, acids are corrosive, right? So they would hurt or they would really taste bad. So they would be left alone if they did that. So cool, Jackie. We have a lot of questions for you. For you. Okay. I'll start with how many legs do they have? Depending on the size, because there's millipedes that are two inches long and there's millipedes that are like almost the length of my arm. These guys here have 200 to 300 legs. Wow. And how long does it take to grow that big? He's probably about five years old. Okay. Um, are they omnivores? They are, no, I've never seen them eat anything protein wise. It's always been plants. And how many babies can they have at a time? Uh, they can make an, a soil ball and have 50 to 100 eggs in that soil ball. Okay, cool. And how can you tell the sex? That's a little tricky because their sex organs are right kind of under their chin. So it would be kind of here on me so they would hide it all the time. So the seventh pair of legs down is where it would be. And they're not that big. So if they stick out, it's the male. If they don't, it's the female. But they're right there. And if you try to look, he projects that area and tucks his chin in. I bet. And will our guarding millipedes grow that big, Jackie? Our garden millipedes? No, we'll get about a third the size. And do you know what is the biggest millipede in the world? The biggest one, I believe, is the African one, which can maybe get, he's about here, maybe three, four inches longer than that. Wow. Okay, that's big. I'll let you, I'll let you carry on. Okay, <laughs> we're going to go here. Oh, lots of babies. Some more little babies. Some more teenagers. We're going to put this big guy back in with all his friends. And I'm going to spray all the leaf litter. This is called leaf litter. Just to make sure that it's nice and moist for them. Because they do not like to dry out. Okay, so that one's done. Now this is about it for our plant eaters. Now we're gonna move on to our meat eaters. We have two of them here. And what we're gonna do is move on to our scorpion. Before we move on to the scorpion, Jackie, I'm just gonna ask you, what is the habitat that they live in, the meaty peats? The millipedes live in, they would live in woods because they're looking for that leaf litter. So they would live in woods that have a good substrate. You know, leaves have fallen on the floor and they're piled up and piled up and because you never see them. They're always underneath, staying moist, eating and breaking down all that. All right, so. A scorpion is an arachnid. He's in the arachnid family. Arachnid means that he has eight legs. So how do we know that he has eight legs for sure? If we look at the model over here, he usually hides. His claws don't count as legs. The eight legs are along his side. So he has four 
on each side and then the claws. So those eight legs put him in the arachnid family with spiders and ticks and daddy long legs and all sorts of other scorpion called creatures that aren't really scorpions. A scorpion is a true scorpion because he has his venom in the back of his tail here. And is it dangerous, are, Jackie? Can they what? Are they dangerous? Depends on the scorpion. This one is one of the bigger ones, and he's not. The forest and the Malaysian and the emperor are some of the biggest scorpions they are, and they're not dangerous to humans. There are smaller ones that are dangerous, or um, ones that talked about a lot is the bark scorpion, and he's probably middle size. If he, this scorpion stung me, it would it would be a poke and it would be like a little spot for a little bit, but that's it. They're pretty harmless. Now, I said he was a carnivore. So, we're going to feed him a cricket. But he probably won't take it because he's very much a nocturnal creature. What is nocturnal again, Jackie? Nocturnal is that he is more active at night. So I got my little crazy cricket here. I'm going to see if she'll go right in front of him. And he's not hungry. So we're going to leave him inside. And he'll roam around tonight because he can see better in the dark and he can sense the heat of the cricket and he'll be able to find them. But what I wanted to show you, something really cool for scorpions, is if I use a black light and I put the black light on him, something's going to happen. Can you see that? He's glowing. So if I take it off, he's just kind of black. So scorpions, all scorpions have this ability to glow under UV light. And that, there's a couple things that scientists think about this, that it's a way that they can see each other and communicate. And it's also protection from UV rays. So whether they're alive or dead, they still glow. It's a special protein they have in their exoskeleton. So that's a word I haven't brought up yet. Yeah, no, there were some people asking about that. And okay. also, we have some people here asking if that scorpion is alive. Because it's not moving. The one in the terrarium is alive. Because he's moved from where he was. He look already. Oh, there you go, everyone. Yeah, he is alive. Cool. And how big, how big does it get? Jackie. He's pretty big for his size right now. And do you know how old is he? He's a Malaysian one. Okay, and how old is he? Oh, how old is he? They can live to be about three to five years. So he's got water, he's got his food. We're going to leave him for tonight. Yeah, again, how can you tell his uh, he? We did that a while ago <laughs> with a scorpion. They have combs under their body, which is part of their, let's see if this one has it. So right here, you can see these frilly things. Okay. And the frilly things are marking where the actual sexual organ is. And the larger the combs, the males have the larger combs, kind of, you know, showing off all the time. And the males have to scent by dragging these on the ground when there's a female that's receptive to mating. So exoskeleton, 
everything that we've touched so far has an exoskeleton. Our skeleton is an endoskeleton. It's inside us. So an exoskeleton would mean that it's outside. So all these bugs have that hard shell and that's their exoskeleton. It's not so hard that it can't break and they can't get hurt, but their bones are on the outside. So when they have to get bigger, because the scorpion isn't born that big, he's tiny, tiny when he's born, he has to shed his skeleton and grow bigger several times. Do we have any questions about that or any of the other bugs so far? Yeah, how many, how many scorpions are there, Jackie? How many scorpions are there? There are many hundreds in the world, but in Canada, one. One species in Alberta, Saskatchewan, and BC, kind of like Badlands dinosaur area. There is one species of scorpion there, which is kind of cool. Because you think these are tropical bugs. They wouldn't be living where we can get minus 30 degrees weather. But they do. Yeah, pretty impressive. And do you know what is the smallest scorpion out there? The smallest scorpion. Mm. No, I'd have to look that up. But because what comes to mind right now is is uh, the other scorpions, the little pseudo scorpions and the false scorpions that are just like millimeters big, but they're not real scorpions. The smallest one that I've seen probably was two inches, but I don't know if that's the smallest. Okay, so we're gonna move on to our next arachnid. Oh, there are some people here wondering if it's a spider. I don't know, would it be a spider? If it's an arachnid, is a good chance. And we've had scorpions. We don't have daddy long legs. We don't have any whip scorpions or whip spiders. So yes, it is. And it's a spider family of tarantulas. So this is our red-legged, Mexican red-legged tarantula. She's always hungry, so we probably will see her eat. I'll get my cricket ready. Ooh. Okay, so I'm just gonna. Will she eat it? Will she eat it? She might have to wake up first. Again, they tend to be nocturnal, so she's kind of just <laughs> daydreaming. I'll turn her around. Maybe not, maybe. Now, where we feed the walking sticks and the snails and the scorpion, uh, the roaches every day, these guys may eat once every couple of weeks. They're just not expending that much energy. You can see how still she is. She's not moving a muscle. So she doesn't need a lot. If she's out in the wild and hunting down her food, she would definitely eat more because she's moving around and being active. I was hoping that she'd be hungry today. I guess not. Maybe she needs a little wake up. We might be out of luck for this one.
So there are about 300 species of tarantulas. This is a medium small tarantula. They can be as small as like a mini to as big as a dinner plate. The Goliath tarantulas are the largest in the world. And the size doesn't mean they're more dangerous. She could probably give you a bigger bite, but they're not dangerous. Tarantulas have not killed anybody because their venom is just not dangerous enough. Not hungry, not hungry at all. So again, like the scorpion, I'm gonna leave it in overnight. We're gonna to check tomorrow. And if she still hasn't eaten it tomorrow, we'll take the crickets out, feed the crickets and let them have another day. And then we'll try again in a couple days and see if they're hungry then. Hey, Jackie, do tarantulas make webs? Tarantulas don't make webs, but they can make silk. Because there's so many spiders in the world. If I make web making, then I sit and I wait for my food to come to me and catch in the web and then I eat it. Tarantulas hunt. So they run after their food. So they don't need to make webs. They use their silk to make an egg case or to make bedding to lie on. So depending on, spiders have what's called spinnerets at the end of their abdomen. And spinnerets are kind of like, if you've ever decorated a cake and you have to put the little ends on to make the different types of decorations, different spiders have different spinnerets for different jobs. So one for making egg case silk, one for making web silk, one for bedding silk, one for sticky lines on the webs. So depending on the spider, they'll have those spinnerets. Pretty cool, Good Jackie. Question. And do they, do they lay eggs? They do lay eggs. They lay a case. They make an egg sack and there could be hundreds of eggs in that egg sack that she makes and covers up with her silk. And how many tarantulas are there at Tiny North? How many tarantulas? At Tiny North. We have four right now, different species. There's a funny four. one here for you. Where do they go to the bathroom? Well, that's a really cool question because tarantulas and scorpions don't eat like the plant eaters eat. They eat all the food and they're chewing all this food and then they all poop. These guys don't eat and chew. It's more like a, a slurping of a soup. When a tarantula gets food, the fangs go into the food and then she injects a digestive juice and turns the inside of the prey to soup. And then all that slurpiness is just <laughs> taken in and eaten. So if I'm not eating solid food, I'm not gonna poop. So all they do is pee. And they don't pee very often because some of these spiders and tarantulas are from very dry areas. So if I'm not, we all know how important water is. So if I can't find water for days, we're in trouble. So what these guys do is they preserve their urine until they absolutely have to get rid of it. So their urine can be concentrated in the crystals. And then the crystals take less space than the liquid. And they keep this inside until they have too many and then they get rid of it. So it can be quite a long time in between peeing. Cool, we have some people asking here, um, how many eggs do they lay in a year? And how fast can they run? Well, tarantulas can be pretty fast. I have gone down to Arizona for a bug convention and at night we actually went out and we're looking for tarantulas. And if you find the den, you dig into the den to get them, 
And if you miss that opportunity and they run away from you, you don't catch it. So he's faster than me. That's pretty fast. And do the meals fight off other meals, Jackie? Do you know? They can, but they're very solitary. All tarantulas live by themselves. They'll get together to mate when the female has shown interest and, and left scents that tell the male that she's interested. But otherwise, they're all solitary because they are very much carnivores and will eat another tarantula even if they're hungry and not ready to mate. Serious stuff. Do we have more bugs there today? No, that's about the end of our bugs. It's been really great having you guys come along with us. Uh, if there's any more questions, we can answer more questions. But I've really enjoyed sharing this with you. And uh, can't wait to see you guys in person. But what, is the, what is the biggest tarantula out there? The biggest tarantula is the Goliath. Some people call it the bird eating tarantula just because it's big enough to eat a bird, but it's dinner plate size. Oh yeah. And how much do they eat in a year? That's a hard one, Jackie. It really depends on their environment. If they've had to run around a lot to find their food, they're wasting energy, they're going to eat more. If food is everywhere around them and they don't have to work for it, they're not going to eat as much because they just have to grab it and then they're good for weeks. Cool. I think that's it for, for us here in the chat. Okay. Well, great. I've really enjoyed your questions. Um, can't wait to see you in person, like I said. But remember that Science North is a nonprofit organization and we'd really appreciate any donations. If you liked what we did today and shared with you, you can go online at Science North or you can go to Kickstarter. Thanks for coming, guys. Bye, guys. See you next time. Tomorrow we have a virtual start party at 7 p.m. Bye. Bye.